What's up guys? It's your girl Sarah and welcome back to Oh So Sarah. Please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. In my last video, I spoke about this young man, Jamel Moore, who was found deceased in the home of Ed Buck, Democratic donor. Over the last week, Another man by the name of Timothy Dean has been found dead in the home of Ed Buck. Why? He too has been found overdosed on methamphetamines. Now, unlike Jamel, it's reported that Timothy has been a 25-year friend of Ed Buck's. However, it's also been reported that Timothy has appeared in over 18 fetish porn videos? Now, you tell me, does Ed Buck have a little fetish with gay black men? I don't know. Does he have an issue with methamphetamines? I don't know. Does he have an issue with injecting men with methamphetamines? I don't know. Let's see what else we found. This is a picture of Jermaine Gagnon, age 28, who came forward to Daily Mail. Now let's see what he had to say to Daily Mail. A man is told how he narrowly escaped death when Hillary Clinton donor Edward Buck injected him with crystal meth at his sex toy field apartment where two black men have died within 18 months. Jermaine Gagnon, 28, told Daily Mail TV how Buck, 63, paid to fly him from Minnesota to Los Angeles, drugged him with a substance dissolved in Gatorade, then injected him with crystal meth at his West Hollywood apartment. And Gagnon shared pictures which showed Buck wearing white long johns crouched over him on a mattress of a pull-out bed during one of their nights together, as well as the toolbox of sex toys he produced during their encounter. Buck is now under investigation over the deaths of a black man in his 50s at his apartment in the early hours of Monday morning this week and a second investigation into the death of Jamel Moore 18 months ago has been reopened after being closed for lack of evidence. So if you guys remember I told you, it took them 19 days to come and look for evidence in the Jamel Moore case. But they found him not guilty, or I shouldn't say not guilty. They dismissed the case because of lack of evidence. But because now another man has been found dead in his apartment, they're reopening that case. But after 18 months, will they really find anything? If after 19 days they found nothing? Let's revisit that. The admissible evidence is insufficient to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that suspect Buck is responsible for the death of Jamel Moore. Likewise, the admissible evidence is insufficient to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that suspect Buck furnished drugs to Jamel Moore or that suspect Buck possessed drugs. So now that a second body has been found, pumped full of methamphetamines, is there now a reasonable doubt that maybe Buck is the one providing these drugs to these men? Leave your comment below and let me know what you think. This is Edward Bernard Peter Buck, known as Ed Buck. He's an American businessman, political activist, and political fundraiser. He began this career as a model and actor then made a significant amount of money running and selling the data service company, Gopher Carrier. To me, in my opinion, 
Ed Buck is a sick man. He preys on young and apparently older African American gay males. And I'm not the only one that has that opinion. Before. But I was in LA. I've been in LA many times. Okay. I know the little scene. Okay. And yes, this dude does like to, you know, exhibit predatory behavior. I've never gone home with him. Okay. But I've seen I've seen his little ways. Have you been to his place before? No. Okay. What's the web? Because everybody knows. Because everybody knows that's the creep. Don't hang out with the creep. But the ones who are drugged up already, the girls in the club, girls as in gay boys in the club, okay. who are maybe a little inebriated, off the tea, smoking whatever kind of drug, and they want a little money, he'll throw them, you know, some. He'll throw them some change, and they'll go home with him. Wow. And so you've seen. So I keep saying that you have a fetish. And this young man says he hears that you have predatory behavior. It sounds kind of fitting, Ed Buck. That you predatory behavior? That you hit the scenes and you're looking for girls, quote unquote, that are already drugged up? And then you take them home and pump them full of methamphetamines even more? No wonder they're coming up dead. A year and a day after Jamel Boer's death, July 28, 2018, Jasmine Caddick tweeted, If another young black gay man overdoses, or worse, dies at Democratic donor Ed Buck's apartment, it's going to be the fault of the sheriff's department and L.A. district attorney for not stopping him when they had the opportunity to. Hashtag Jamel Moore. Hashtag Justice for Jamel. Just six months ago, Jasmine warned the sheriff's department and the L.A. district attorneys that if another dead man appeared in Ed Buck's apartment, it would be their fault. Why? I would like to read to you an article that includes Jasmine's opinions and what she's found. This is from NBC News, dated January 11, 2019. When authorities in Los Angeles found Timothy Dean dead in the apartment of Ed Buck, a Democratic activist, and campaign donor early Monday morning, Jasmine Kanick was not surprised. Just six months ago, Kanick had posted a warning on Twitter that something like this might happen. In July of 2017, Jamel Moore, a 26-year-old black man, died from a methamphetamine overdose in Buck's apartment. Shortly after, Kanick followed a tip from a colleague and reached out to Moore's friends and family who had discovered a journal among the possessions returned with Moore's body. They were disturbed by what they said they found. Moore's journal said that Buck got him hooked on meth and had drugged him against his will. Now, if you remember, in the video that I did about Jamel, I read some of these inserts from his journal. They were very disturbing. He said he wanted to be normal again, that he didn't want to feel this pain anymore, that he wanted to be the way that God meant for him to be, that Ed was the one that had him hooked on meth. Let's continue this article. Since Moore's death, Kanick has collected a trove of information in an attempt to make the case that Ed Buck is a predator who preys on down-on-their-luck black men by inviting them to his apartment and suggesting they try methamphetamine injections or slamming. Kanick conducted interviews with first-hand sources, men who said they went to Buck's apartment for paid sex and drugs, several of them who told her that Buck offered them money 
for a chance to administer an injection of crystal methamphetamine, the most dangerous way to take a dangerous drug. All of her reports are published on her personal website. Here's a picture of the story from her website, jasmineacanic.com, where she has tons of receipts, screenshots of text messages, and more. Please make sure you check her out if you're interested in more about this story. Now I'll continue with the article. Thank you. Kanick also published journal entries from Jamel Moore in which he writes that Buck gave him his first meth injections and got him addicted. Kanick published photographs and videos taken by the men who said they were taken inside Buck's apartment that corroborate key details from the initial death report and contemporaneous journals, a rolling red toolbox filled with sex toys and drug paraphernalia, a sportswear fetish, and an aversion to sexual intercourse. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department confirmed Thursday that homicide detectives are currently investigating Timothy Dean's death on Friday, the L.A. District Attorney's Office declined to comment due to the pending investigation. Earlier this week, Seymour Amster, Buck's attorney, told NBC News in what appeared to be a prepared statement that his client was not in custody and hadn't been charged in connection with the death of Timothy Dean, who he said was a longtime friend of Buck's who had asked to come over. Ed was reluctant, but the friend was insistent. Amster claimed a short time later, Dean began exhibiting bizarre behavior, which prompted Buck to call 911. Amster said, NBC News followed up calls and texts to Amster over a spam of four days were not returned. I'm sorry, guys. But what the fuck is really going on here? Is this about white privilege? Is this about money? Because we have journal entries. We have men dying. We have methamphetamines. We have predatory behavior. We have fetishes. We have all this going on. And this man is out walking free. I just don't understand it. And again, let me apologize. I don't know if you saw my prior video, but I've been sick, so my voice keeps going in and out, so I apologize. But come on, what is really going on here? What is this about? Do we not care because these are young black men? Do we not care because these are gay men? Why do we not care? Why are people not taking a stance? Out of all the videos that I've done, this is one that is, the Jamel Moore video is one that has gotten the least amount of views. When I've talked to people about it before I did the video, nobody knew anything about the latest death, and definitely people didn't know about Jamel Moore. And I'm just not understanding why. What's going on? Please, again, leave your comments in the comments section below. And tell me if you've heard about this prior to watching my videos. I'm going to continue to read. I'm not going to read all of the article. But there's another part of the article that I definitely want to read. A couple more parts of this article. It was a very, very long article. (laughs) But there's definitely another part of the article that I want to read to you where Jasmine makes some definitely good points so bear with me bear with my voice and um, let's continue this please following a pattern Canic 41 an award-winning social commentator and former congressional press secretary Hmm. catch that T congressional press secretary yeah 
started to investigate Buck just a few weeks after Moore's death. Kanick said a tip from a colleague led her to look into the prominent political activist. Letitia Nixon, Moore's mother, told Kanick she had a lot of concerns and was not getting a lot of answers from the authorities, Kanick recalled. Kanick then spoke to friends of Moore's, several of whom told similar tales that Buck uses gay dating websites to invite black men to his apartment to use or try methamphetamine. We started to figure out there was this pattern and practice where he solicited and went after young, gay, black men, usually men who were homeless, HIV positive, who were in need of food or money, Kanick said. Citing in-person interviews she conducted and published with people who say they met Buck for sex and drugs. Not all of these men were on drugs when they met Ed Buck, Kanick added, but Ed Buck got them on drugs. I mean, come on here. Is it that the police didn't do a thorough investigation? Is it that because when they went, they didn't find any methamphetamines, that they just let them off the hook? Is it because of all the donations that he's given? What is the reason that they let this man go? They didn't interview anybody. I don't understand. Does Jamel not matter? Now is it because that there's a second person that's dead? That there's an investigation? Absolutely. Absolutely. But we have report after report that this man is a predator. That he's going after our young black men. That he has a fetish. That he is a predator. That he has a toolbox filled with toys. That I would post here. But I don't want my page to get striked. I don't want my videos to get taken down. Because I've seen them. And it's nothing nice. Murder rebranded. Ashley Marie Preston, a transgender activist, a former board member of the Stonewall Democratic Club of Los Angeles, said she and Ed Buck were friends temporarily during her time on the board. Preston later worked to eject Buck from the club, where he had been a lifetime member. During a mountain retreat for the Stonewall Democratic Club, Prior to Moore's death, Preston said Buck joined her for fresh air on the porch of a cabin. Then he pulled out his cell phone and he was like, he's so hot. And I was like, who? And he showed me his phone and there was a black man sitting in a dark room. And the only light in the room was a light from the lighter and he was smoking methamphetamine. This sounds like a sick individual. This sounds like a man with a problem. And he's out here free. He's out here to do it again. And I agree with Jazz Mechanic. If another man comes up dead, it is the fault of the Sheriff's Department and the L.A. District Attorneys. There's no reason this man should be let out free. Two men in 18 months have died from methamphetamine overdoses. And here he is saying that he's so hot. And the only way you can see him is by the light of him smoking methamphetamines. There's a real issue here. And Ed Buck needs to be stopped. And all those Democrats that have received money from him need to give that money back. Otherwise, you're supporting a murderer. Yes, I called him a murderer because in my opinion, Ed Buck is a murderer. Predatory and racist behavior. At a community meeting about Jamel Moore's death in 2017, Moore's former roommate, Samuel Lloyd, 
said Buck, went out there searching for other men that were struggling and were on the streets and had no money. Jamel was scared, Lloyd added. He came and he laid in my arms and he cried. He was scared. He was scared that this man was going to hurt him. Jerome Kitchen, a close family friend of Morris, said, Another death of a black man in Buck's apartment has jolted the community. Our community didn't give Jamel as much attention as they're giving now because they didn't know how to judge the situation, Kitchen told NBC News, but surely they do now. Nana, the attorney for Letitia Nixon, was unequivocal about what Moore's family wants. We want Ed Buck to be stopped and to prevent anyone else from being killed or harmed by Ed Buck and this and his dangerous, predatory, and racist behavior. Equality includes everyone. Equality includes everyone. It includes me. It includes you. It includes our young, gay, black males. Ed Buck needs to be stopped. If you are in the West Hollywood, Los Angeles area, please support any candlelight vigils, any um, movements that are being held in honor of Jamel Moore, in honor of Timothy Dean. They need your support. But Ed Buck needs to be stopped. His predatory, his fetish behaviors need to be stopped. This is your girl, Sarah with also Sarah and like I said when I did the video on Jamel Moore I was very heartbroken but now I'm angry and I just appreciate you all for sitting and listening to this video please please leave your comments below share this video and if you aren't already subscribed, please subscribe. Again, this is your girl, Sarah. And this is also Sarah. And I love you all to pieces. Thank you so much for joining me. You be also blessed. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.